What's up guys, this is Merv Music, and we're back with some Modern Warfare 2, but I really want to talk a lot about Warzone 2 and DMZ mode along with raids and just all of the other insanely huge news going on with this game right now. Probably just going to goof around with this class right here. We got the 725, I've got a gold. This class is disgusting, but for the sake of the gold camo grind, I'm probably just going to stick with using the X13 autos akimbo. Oh, wait, oh my god, I just got 50 rounds. I didn't know I had this. Oh, it's over. This pistol now has 50 rounds, but it's akimbo, so we have 100 rounds to spray at people. I have to get double kills. I still have to level it up, but yeah, we're going to do that while we talk about all this stuff that's going on. I think regardless of how we're all feeling about Modern Warfare 2 at this current moment, this first season is going to be huge. I even posted about this on the community section of the channel. This is the overview for the first season for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, but even this is not even everything that we're getting. So as you can see here, the map that we have for Warzone 2 is all Mazra, but there's already been tons of speculation that there's going to be a second map for Warzone 2, like a full-blown map, and I think it's going to take place at the U.S. and Mexico border, and it's going to have all those points of interest. Uh, let's actually get into the game first. Hold up. Oh, we're lagging. Yo, Embassy always lags my PC so bad because it's actually loading the entire outside war zone map. This one's especially brutal on my PC. Now, at the time of recording this video, I've been briefly watching some of the DMZ and Warzone 2 gameplay. There were some people that got to go to Infinity Ward Studios and stream and play it early. And I know I'm mostly like, you know, multiplayer guy doing Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, but I'm 100% going to be checking out Warzone 2 and streaming it when it's out. It was looking pretty good. And if you're not feeling the multiplayer for Modern Warfare 2, I mean, there's always going to be Warzone. DMZ, raids, all that stuff, it's coming. Infinity Ward really is going huge this year, and they're going to have something for for everyone. Obviously, if you're into the Battle Royale stuff, you're going to be on Warzone 2. If you like the Tarkov style gameplay, then you're going to be playing DMZ. Although I've already seen some people saying that it's not going to be that good or it doesn't look that good, but I think we all have to at least try it and play it before coming to any hard conclusions. I've literally only played Tarkov once, so I mean, I'm not going to be like the go-to person for DMZ information. But for me, at least, it's very typical for me to try out and check out everything that the game has to offer. And as far as it goes for the more tactical style of gameplay, especially when it comes to like co-op spec ops, I think the raids are going to be huge. That was... That was a double kill? I'll take it. I don't even know what happened to my pistols there, but <laughs> whatever gets the camo. Another thing that sounds really interesting about Warzone 2 is the new Gulag system. I will have to double check this, but when I was reading the blog post about this, apparently when you go into Gulag now, it's going to be a 2v2. I don't know if this new Gulag will still have traditional like 1v1s. Maybe in some situations it might, but it seems like they're going to have like this whole 2v2 thing where one set of duos is trying to knock out the other one, but apparently like midway through the Gulag, there's going to be an enemy called the Jailer. And if anyone kills the, this like Jailer enemy, then all four of those people are sent back into the map. Now, I don't know if they're giving out all of the info on that. Like, I don't know if the Jailer is an AI or if it's gonna be like a fifth person who is like dropped in as the Jailer and if he dies, well, then he's out. But then everyone else goes back in. I'm kind of led to believe that it's gonna be an AI. It'll be really interesting to see if people actually wanna like work together to kill the Jailer or if they're like, no, fuck you. We're not messing with that. We're gonna knock you out. Loadouts are coming back into the game and there's different ways to earn them. You can either get them from the buy stations or they're gonna drop in in like the middle of the game. But as far as it goes for looting, this is where things are gonna get interesting. For the DMZ mode and even in the campaign as well, we saw a backpack system where you can kind of like organize things, craft things. Now, as far as it goes for the whole crafting element, I don't know if that was like a campaign only thing or if we're going to see that in DMZ and raids, but I'm pretty sure for Warzone 2, we're not going to have the most like simplified looting system like we had in the original. Pretty sure there's going to be a backpack and you're going to have to organize your loot and stuff like that. Obviously, since I'm more of a casual Warzone player, I kind of like the simplified looting, but at the end of the day, no matter what kind of system the game has, we're all going to have to use it and adapt to it unless you just don't want to play, which I mean, if you don't want to play, that's totally fine. You know, I just got the information. I'm trying to give you guys a heads up, get all of us prepared for what's about to come. Now, Warzone 2 is also going to have 150 players and apparently multiple circle collapses. So it's not just going to be one circle closing. Like there's going to be multiple circles you can go to. Also, man, I did great. Wow, Bravo 6 was really going dark there. What the? Oh, that's right. There's also going to be third person battle royale. Now, I, I think that might kind of be like an LTM. I don't know if it's going to be in the game all the time, but that'll be pretty interesting. Yeah, so for all Mazra, here's all the maps that we've already played that are going to be part of the Warzone map. Albagra, Embassy, Zarqua, Tarak, amazing map, by the way. <laughs> Seraph Bay and Said. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But yeah, basically these six maps that we've already played are going to be part of the Warzone map. Oh, that's right. There's going to be AI in battle royale only at Strongholds, Black Sites, and Gulag Overtime. Oh, maybe that's what they mean by the Jailer. During each match, several strongholds will be activated around the map. Squads can visit these areas to fight AI combatants. The first team to complete a stronghold must disarm a bomb and will earn a key to a black site and their custom loadout. Oh, that's right. There's going to be a fuel mechanic. Now, this is so funny. There seems to be quite a lot of confusion for Warzone 2 about the addition of, like, the electric Hummer. The game's going to have a Hummer EV, right? But it's still going to use regular fuel like other vehicles. I'll have to do some extensive research, but I mean, unless, of course, that Hummer is fully electric, it should still take regular gas fuel that car use. Ah! Did I get no scoped? I, no no I did. 
Jesus. Yeah, there may not only be one safe zone. In BR, there can be up to three circles within the collapse. Proximity chat, obviously, that's gonna be hilarious. I can't wait for that. Bunch of different vehicles and stuff. There's gonna be swimming. There's gonna be, like, boats and shit now. I'll have the entire Call of Duty blog post in the description if you guys would like to, like, you know, really read it. Take a super in-depth look at everything and check it out for yourself. For this video, I just wanted to kind of, like, condense things and talk about the most important things, for sure. Oh, that's right. A regular war zone, like, the first war zone is just gonna be called Warzone Caldera. They're literally gonna take out everything else and you're only gonna be able to play on the Caldera map. I don't know why it's so funny to me because there's people who are obviously upset with this, but it was done intentionally. Even the leaks and rumors were pointing at this as well because they want to kill off the first war zone so you'll move on to the second one. The only thing that's going to progress from war zone one into war zone two is your COD points on your account. None of your tokens are gonna transfer, your skins, we already knew all of that. People acting like this is a brand new thing. I mean, shit, I guess maybe it is new for some people, but we've known about this for months. The whole entire thing is premeditated, it's done on purpose. Kill off the first war zone so people will move on to the second one. Caldera is garbage. That was the whole point. But yeah, moving on from that, we got some stuff coming up from Modern Warfare 2. I don't know what this skin is, but it looks disgusting. Kind of give me like those OG rows from Modern Warfare 2019 vibes. But for Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer season one, this is the big stuff. We're essentially getting Shoot House remastered at launch, and then we're going to be getting this version of Shipment mid-season. So we won't be able to play Shipment immediately at season one, but we will have Shoot House at least. So, you know, long shots, that'll be good. I think it'll definitely help intensify the camo grind for a lot of people. Kind of help speed things up, especially if you're struggling with long shots and mounting kills. They're going to have a CDL mosh pit for ranked multiplayer. And I I know I literally just played a pro sim Modern Warfare 2 S&D tournament for $60,000, but you guys know I'm not like huge into competitive, but I also don't mind that they're doing this because it gives those really sweaty players something else to do. So yeah, I think it's actually a good thing that they're focusing on rank play for the game. As long as they're getting some decent rewards, so that way they'll actually want to play it. Gotta give them some kind of rank. You have to give them rewards and stuff like that. Otherwise people aren't going to want to do it. If you're going to sweat for anything in this game, it better be for something good. It's the same thing with the camos, man. I mean, I'm actually going for the camos because I like how they look. Oh yeah, there's going to be a brand new Spec Ops mission as well in the middle of the season. It's called High Grounds. I don't necessarily want to spoil the details of the Spec Ops mission, but you know, you guys can check out the blog post if you want to know more. I actually really enjoy the idea of going into it blind and then trying to figure out exactly what to do. I just kind of find that to be more fun. And yes, guys, it is confirmed that we're going to be getting Tier 1 in Season 1. For those that might not know, Tier 1 is the new name for Hardcore, and it was not available at launch for this game. It 100% should have been, but we have to wait until Season 1 for it to actually be in the game. It was already confirmed that there were apparently some issues. They didn't have the mode ready, which is weird. But I guess I can kind of get behind that, because if you went into Private Match, and played tier one, there was no kill feed. Or as the devs call it, the obituary. Now, I'm not exactly sure if the full mode is gonna have this or not. I really hope they don't do away with it. Karina and I have plans to go for a quad feed with every gun and hit every single gun clean, specifically just in tier one. I mean, that's gonna be a lot of fun. But if there's no obituary or kill feed, then we can't really do that. So we'll have to see what Infinity Ward is doing with this mode in season one. On top of that as well, they're gonna be adding in the combat records, so that'll be pretty neat. You can check out your stats. Make sure to check out all your statisticals. It's a step in the right direction. I think they even admitted it as well that they wanted this stuff to be be in the game at launch, but they did not have it ready. And I really do think if you look at this game as a whole, you can see how many moving parts there are and how many things they've had going on. And it kind of makes sense that they wouldn't have every little thing ready. You know, there's a shit ton of people who work on this game and we need to try to be a little bit more like empathetic about that. I mean, obviously we're all super demanding and we all want things to be a certain way and have certain features and shit, dude, I've been enjoying the game. I mean, I would have loved to be able to play some tier one or hardcore, but I've just kind of been rolling with it and things have been fine in core. Time to kill is fast enough anyway. <laughs> Not gonna lie though, going for double kills with this gun on this map is is terrible. I don't even know how I just did that. <gasps> it's Swerve Braden! Oh, I made him slouch! Let's get those doubles, boy! You! Yeah. Oh, that's right, they have the whole, like, new Battle Pass system. As I'm sure you guys have seen in the last three Call of Duty games, the Battle Pass has 100 tiers, and let's say you want something really badly at tier 75. Well, you'd have to go from 0 to 75 to get whatever that item is. For Modern Warfare 2, you're not gonna have to do that. The way they're doing the Battle Pass in this game is that there's gonna be 20 sectors, and in each sector, there's going to be five items that you can get. So as you kind of progress through the Battle Pass system, you can unlock a sector, and then start unlocking the items in that sector, so you can get to the things that you want faster. It sounds like it's gonna be better, but I hope that it's somehow not worse. I think we'll really just have to wait and see, but it does sound like a better system. Oh yeah, and here's the guns that are gonna be coming to the game. Right off the bat for season one, we're getting a brand new sniper. We're getting the Victus XMR. Now, I mean, we use this thing in the all gillied up two mission in the campaign. So while it might not be like brand new, we are getting a new sniper in the game. And I think that's great. For Vanguard, wasn't the PTRS like the only new sniper we got? I mean, that shit was sad. There's also a brand new SMG that's gonna be available right at the launch of season one. Kind of looks like an MP5. Oh shit, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. They got that double stun on me, bro. You really think you're gonna get me? No! I need two more doubles! Come on! I don't know what the level 21 challenge is, so I'll probably end up leaving. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this shit. I still died. Shot one bullet in my toe from range. There we go. Oh, lag. 
No. Yeah, so since this game's ass, I'm just gonna look at the gun. Yeah, the Bass P SMG. Aggressive fire rate. I mean, it looks like an MP5, but it probably isn't. I always get guns wrong, so I'm not even gonna talk about them anymore. <laughs> there we go. We're done. Yep, I'm out of here. I just want to know. Give me a gold gun today. Get 40 kills using a Kimbo. Oh my. Well, but yeah, here's the other two guns that we're getting mid-season. We're getting the Honey Badger, basically. They're calling it the Chimera. And then we're also getting the M13B, which I'm... Pretty sure these are actually just the same gun. <laughs> At least it looks like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure in Modern Warfare 2019, you could turn the M13 into the Honey Badger from Call of Duty Ghosts. It's not like super disappointing, but these are also not like the most brand new guns for season one. We're not getting like a crossbow. You know, we're not really getting like those like fun, goofy weapons or anything like super brand new. And as far as I can tell, there's still no official word on getting the intervention, like the original one from Modern Warfare 2. Dude, I swear to God, I tried to pull the Infinity War double down and be like, this gun, the SPX-80 is the intervention, but I'm pretty sure I was wrong. Someone in the comments had pointed out that the SPX-80 in this game really resembles the Shaytac Vidar 300. So I really feel like unless Infinity Ward changes the kill feed icon to resemble the MSR, it's kind of seeming like the SPX-80 is still like a Shaytac kind of weapon, making it closer to the intervention, not the MSR. At least I'm pretty sure. Dude, I, I mean, I, I really can't be bothered anymore. This is the consequence of not being able to have real gun names. Everyone's arguing with each other. We don't really know what the guns are 100%. Just a big old guessing game. I understand it's expensive to buy the licenses, but shit, dude. They made a lot of money off this game so far. I mean, maybe next time. Modern Warfare 3. Can we have real gun names, please? Six new operators as well. We have Zeus coming in at launch. We have Klaus. He's redacted. We can't see him, but he's gonna be mid-season. Gaz is also coming mid-season, which is pretty dope. And then they got a collaboration with some football players. We have Neymar Jr. We got Pogba and Messi. People saying that the Call of Duty mobile versions of them look better. I mean, dude, I think it's kind of a neat collab. I don't really see the complaints, but there are some because it's Call of Duty. Gotta complain about every little tiny thing. Look, the only thing I want for this game at the moment is an NVIDIA patch to make it run smoother on everyone's PCs. Because right now at this very moment, I prefer playing on PS5. I get a more consistent frame rate and less crashing and all these like weird things going on. Oh, that's right. They're also changing the prestiging as well. Now we're not going to have classic prestige like we've seen in traditional Call of Duty games, but it looks like Infinity Ward has heard our feedback and they're giving us a different kind of seasonal prestige. So with the recent Call of Duty games and stuff, they had seasonal prestiges. Every single season, you get like three or four prestiges, but then it resets when it goes to like season two, season three. So after all of that grinding and all of that leveling up that you put in, you would be reset to zero every single season. That's not gonna be happening anymore. You will actually just continue to hold that level and you're gonna keep working your way up every single season. I think this is a much better move. It actually gives all of us an incentive to wanna keep leveling up and prestiging and, you know, just keep grinding. Although one thing I will say is that even though this is better than the last three years of Call of Duty in terms of seasonal prestiges, it still does not address the issue that a lot of us have with the seasonal prestiging, which is that there's really no, like, risk reward for prestiging at all. Now, obviously that could be looked at as a good thing because, you know, you're not gonna lose your camos, you're not gonna lose your custom classes, you don't have to, like, re grinds your weapons and get attachments for them ever again. There are some positives to it, but you know, the way that old prestiging worked is that there was a risk reward. I guess at this point in Call of Duty, it's more so like a feeling. Like it doesn't necessarily feel like you're prestiging in the game. You're just still getting level after level. Whereas in older Call of Duty games, that prestige icon meant a lot more because it meant that you were giving things up in order to get there. You had to pay the ultimate sacrifice of having to redo your camos and shit. All of that for a different looking icon as well. I mean, and depending on the game, a calling card and an emblem. Honestly, man, I don't know what they should do about prestiging anymore. I really don't because I can understand why they wouldn't want to have traditional prestiging. With how long it takes to level up weapons and get all of the camos in the game, I don't know why anyone would ever have to like want to reset and do that all over again. That sounds even more painful. Why would anyone want to do that more than once? Out of combat overview. Okay, well, I don't really care about that. Code bowl, they got the shop. Okay, yeah, I think we're done. That's everything from the Call of Duty blog post. This is without a doubt, unmistakably the biggest season we've ever had for a Call of Duty game. Now, obviously things like Warzone 2, Battle Royale, DMZ, Tier 1, these are things that could have been in the game at launch. And I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of people saying that we're being drip fed content, which I mean, I guess it's it's kind of true. I'll agree with that in the sense that we could have just gotten all of this stuff initially. But one thing I want all of us to keep in mind is that we're getting all of this stuff for free. Sure, they're going to have some paid bundles. You're going to have to buy a paid battle pass and all that stuff, but that's pretty typical for games nowadays. I wouldn't necessarily say we're being drip fed, but we are being fed quite a lot of fucking content. Like, not for nothing, man. This is a lot of stuff that's coming to the game. And this is only roughly three weeks after the launch of the full game. I'm gonna say it now. I'm grateful. I don't know how anyone could look at this massive list of stuff coming to the game and be like, oh. Well, I guess we're getting Warzone and DMZ and raids and new maps and guns. Like, dude, what the fuck? That's so much stuff. And if you own Modern Warfare 2, you don't have to pay for any of it. Maybe it's just because I'm in a really good mood because, you know, I've actually been enjoying the game. The content's been doing super well. You guys have been killing it. We've been getting so many new subscribers and shit. Views are up, everything 
everything is just insane on this game so far. I fucking love you guys. My motivation and my mood, everything has just been so good lately. I'm not even mad. I don't want to be that person that's just going to sit here and complain about the game for the next year or two. But since we're talking about upcoming content for Call of Duty, I do want to talk about something that surfaced recently. There were talks about how Modern Warfare 2 is not going to be getting that second year of content, and instead there's going to be a new premium release for Call of Duty in 2023. There were a lot of rumors and speculations going on about that, but apparently, I think it was Jason Schreier, he was saying that it's most likely going to be a 60 or $70 paid expansion for Modern Warfare 2. Now look, if that is the case and we are getting year two for Modern Warfare 2 and it's going to be like a big expansion, I hope it's huge. Since we're talking about season one for Modern Warfare 2, it's very apparent that this is the biggest season of content we've ever seen. Regardless of the fact that they might have actually been withholding this and now they're releasing it as season one, it's still massive. And I think you guys know how I feel about this. I really do hope that for 2023, we're not getting a brand new Call of Duty game. I don't mind paying another 60 to $70 for more content for this game because it's already doing so fucking well. As long as that content is really good and there's a lot of it. I'm talking about campaign expansion. We get like a ton of remastered stuff from the original Modern Warfare games. Continue to expand on Warzone 2, DMZ, Raids, Spec Ops, all that stuff. As long as it's done right, they should be able to get that extra 60 to $70 from all of us. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a brand new Call of Duty game that's going to continue to divide and split up the player base. In general, so far, I've really been enjoying this game and I want to continue to see it expand and grow. That's what she said. But with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me play some Modern Warfare 2 using the Akimbo X13s while talking about all of the new stuff that's coming with Modern Warfare 2 Season 1, whether that's Warzone 2, DMZ, Multiplayer, we got so much coming up. So if you guys did enjoy this video and you're looking forward to Modern Warfare 2 Season 1, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later. I had you, Tom. Let's go, boy. Let's fucking go. Nero. Nero, is that me and you?